وَعَلَى أَهْلِ بَيْتِكَ الْمَعْصُومِينَ الْمُنْتَجَبِينَ يَا لَيْتَنَا كُنَّا مَعَكُمْ سَادَتِي فنفوز هذا فوزا عظيما أعوذ بالله من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم هنالك دعا زكريا ربا قال رب اب لي من لدنك ذريه طيبه انك سميع الدعاء امنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم صلوات اللهم صل على محمد قل الله في ابا عبد الله الحسين with the loudest of our voices صلوا على محمد وال محمد صل على محمد قل الله في امام صاحب العصر والزمان ارواحنا لك الفداء صلوا على محمد وال محمد ما صل على محمد Once again we thank almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us this moment and this opportunity tonight to commemorate the 40th anniversary of our beloved sister mother auntie who departed from this world 40 days or 40 night ago the verse i've just quoted respected brothers and sisters from glorious quran is from Quran number 3 verse 48 and this particular verse of Quran is talking about one beautiful and unique supplication of prophet Zakaria alayhi salam and departing from this verse our topic of discussion for tonight will be the provisions for those in barzakh for the benefit of those of us who are not muslims the word barzakh simply means life after death and for those of you who are here the day she departed from this world i spoke about life after death and i made a point of saying when you look at our lives in this world it is between pains and happiness Today you are happy the next day you are sad today you make a lot of money the next day you run at lost today someone is happy with you and loves you the next day someone is not happy with you life of this world which is dominated by material is like that it is between happiness and sadness you will never tell me the whole year you are happy there are sometimes when things did not go right in the course of the year and there are times when these are very okay and nicely so looking at the characteristics and the features of this world as we mentioned on that day just for the benefit of those who are not muslims hence i'm recapping or recapturing what i said on that day when we were burying her that when you look at this world it is a world of limitations we are limited by time we are limited by space so for argument's sake If we say life is entirely about this world then my common sense tells me what is the benefit of being in this world If life is only to come here and end up here then what's the benefit So the only prophet of Islam comes out and said If life is defined as this material world whereby today I am happy and the next day I'm sad Today I make ends meet 
and the next day I make profit, and the other day I run at lost, then what is the benefit of this life? Then there is no need for me to come to this world. Hence, the Holy Prophet of Islam says, No, this is a means to the real life. And the real life is when a person departs from this world. Hence, the Holy Prophet of Islam says, When you look at this world, it is material and spiritual, but dominated by material. But the moment you depart from this world and you are buried in that grave, it is no more material, it is spiritual which will dominate it. And you will tell me, even in our life, Yes, we are dominated by material, but the chief component of our existence, which gives us signals in our life, is nothing but our spiritual component, which is our soul. So when you look at the topic we said, the provisions for the people of Barzakh, Barzakh simply means the immediate life after the life of this world. Meaning, the moment a person is buried in his grave, a new life altogether is going to take shape. That is the life which is dominated by spiritual and not material. So therefore, the topic I want to discuss tonight with you, respected brothers and sisters, our Muslims and non-Muslims and our Hindus alike, is the main provision that we need to go with or to leave behind when we depart from this world. And that provision is the provision of having a good child in your life. There is no better investment in one's life than to invest in the spirituality of your sons and daughters. Those of you who are here yesterday in my sermon, I did mention that. That today when we look at our situations and our conditions, we invest more in the material lives of our children, more than the way we invest in the spiritual life of our children. So hence, the holy prophet of Islam comes out and said, the best form of investment that a person can undertake in his or her life is to invest in the spirituality of your sons and daughters. And you will see the benefit of it as we're going to explain in our discourse of tonight. And the verse I've quoted is very clear from the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Prophet Zakaria. We all know the history and the story of Zakaria. Prophet Zakaria spent many years without having a son or a daughter, without having a child. Then he requested and prayed and asked Almighty God, to bless him with a child. Hence the verse I quoted, Quran 3, verse 48. Hunalika da'a Zakariya Rabba. Kala Rabbi Habli miladunka dhurriya tantayyiba. Innaka sami uddu'a. Zakariya made du'a. Let us outline these verses of Quran so that I and you will understand the most important thing in our life is to leave behind one of the best child who can remember us not only when we were with him in this dunya, not only when we invest in his education that he appreciates, not only when he takes over our business that he appreciates, but even when I depart from this world and I'm no more with him, that son and daughter will remember me in my life of Barza. Zakaria made dua. Rabbi habli min ladunka dhurriyatan tayyiba. Said, oh my Lord, Bless me from thee, a very good and pious offspring of family. And not only the career, you go to the history of Abraham, Ibrahim alayhi salam. Ibrahim asked so many things from Allah. But one of the most unique things that Ibrahim asked Allah was for God Almighty to bless him with a pious child. And the history of Ibrahim is more or less like that of Zakaria. Ibrahim spent so many years without having a child. But when Ibrahim wanted to ask Allah, God Almighty, to bless him with a child, what was the dua of Ibrahim? Rabbi habli, Rabbi habli, mina salihin. Oh Allah, bless me, not just a child, not just a daughter, not just a son, 
But I want a son or a daughter who are from Salihin. Today, I and you, when we are looking for children, we're looking at them, he's a doctor. I'm fortunate, I'm successful in my life. He's the top engineer, he's the best gynecologist, for instance. Oh, I'm successful. But when you look at the pious servant of Allah, all the prophets, he said, Rabbi Habili mina salihin, Ibrahim. Allah bless me, a child who is of the pious ones, who is from the righteous ones, a child of a good behavior, a child of a good akhlaq. And the same thing, another verse, you find Prophet Ibrahim made another dua. Rabbana hablana min azwajina wa dhurriyatina kurrata a'yun wa ja'alna lil muttaqina imama. Ibrahim made another dua. Oh Allah, if you blesses me with a wife, or you blesses me with a son or a daughter, don't just give me wife, don't just give me daughter or a son, give me a wife or a son who will be means to seek proximity to you Allah. And the same thing, this word salihin. You find so many prophets of Allah use the word salihin in their du'as when they were asking Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of them is Prophet Sulaiman alayhi salam. Where Sulaiman made du'a. And at the end Sulaiman said, Wahabli mina salihin. Ya Allah, bless me a son or a daughter who will be pious, who will be upright, who will be very righteous person. The same thing Yusuf alayhi salatu wa salam. Tawaffani musliman wa alihikni bis salihin. Yusuf made dua. Ya Allah, when my time is up to depart from this world, let me depart as someone who submit wholeheartedly to your calling almighty God. And if you are to raise me up after my death, raise me among the salihin, among the good ones. Don't raise me in any group. Even our own beloved prophet of Islam, how many times he made dua? God Almighty, don't bless me with just a child. Bless me with a child who is pious and that shall become means of my happiness and means of my comfort and blesses me, bless me with a child who will take me closer to you, Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So therefore, when you look at all these verses of Quran, brothers and sisters, they are highlighting that the best form of investment in our lives is to invest in the spirituality of our sons and daughters, which unfortunately most of us don't give it priority. We give priority to something else because we're thinking that if a person make it in this world, then everybody will point out to him to say he is successful. A person may be successful here, but in the eye of Almighty God, he's not a successful person. Now our mother, Shaheen Bai, she departed from this world. One of the most important things which she need in Barza, which I will explain more, is to leave is the child that she leave behind. Hence, the riwaya of Rasulullah says, to have a child is a ni'ma of Allah. It's a blessing of Almighty God to have a child. And scholars explain, why is it a blessing to have a child? Because that child can build one of the best heaven for you or paradise on the day of Qiyamah. And the same thing Rasulullah said, yes, a child is a blessing. But that child is amanat. It is a trust which is being given to each and every one of us. And we will be questioned of these trusts. Hence, in a famous riwayah where Rasulullah said, Kullukum ra'in wa kullukum mas'ulun Each and every one of you as parents, you are regarded like shepherd. And you will be questioned of the flocks given to you by Almighty God. So therefore, when Islam regards children as amana, as trust, it's from this perspective of saying that we will be questioned of this trust given to us by Allah. Did you show the son way of Allah? Or what was priority in the life of son from your perspective? So therefore, I'm mentioning this for each and every one of us to understand that. What is important in the eye of Allah may not be necessarily what we think is important in our eyes. And if we truly 
want to prepare for our lives after death, then there is no better way to give our children the best Islamic and spiritual upbringing. Hence, you find in a very beautiful tradition of Rasulullah, the Holy Prophet of Islam mentioned, there are five things that if a person does in this world, when you die, those five things will help you in your life of barzah. Meaning, if you do those five things in this dunya, when you depart, those five things will serve you and it will illuminate your grief. Number Rasulullah said, Man hafara bi'ira. People are struggling and they don't have water, drinking water. And you go in your way to provide them a way of drinking water. So long as they continue to use that water, the Holy Prophet of Islam says, when you die, that will illuminate your grave. Number two, Rasulullah mentioned, when you plant a tree, where people use that tree for their livelihood, so long as they continue to use it when you die, God Almighty will illuminate your grave. And number three, Rasulullah says, when you help build a house for Almighty God on the face of the universe, and people keep on praying in that mosque, it will illuminate your grave. And the fourth one, Rasulullah says, when you write a book about Almighty God, and people benefit from that book, it will illuminate your grave. And the fifth one is my point of discussion. When you die and you leave behind one child, not two, only one, and that son or daughter is God-fearing, is God-loving, that son remembers you every day. Definitely, you will get light in your grave. And for son to become pious, it's not a miracle. You as a father and a mother, you have to do that work. If you don't do that work in your lives, then your sons will not become a pious child. If your aim and ambition is only to show your sons and daughters material is where to go. There is nothing like that in Islam. If that is the only thing you show your son or daughter, then they will not benefit from their life of Barza. Now let us look at some of the benefit of it in the life of Barza based on the teachings of our great scholars within the school of thought of Ahlul Bayt. There was a very great scholar, which our scholars even Allah narrated this in one of his books. This scholar, one night he was fast asleep. Then he dreamt. In his dream, he saw the souls of people in the life after death. So many people. And all of them were happy, except one old man. And I want you really to listen to this Hekaya very carefully, brothers and sisters. And especially the family of Shain Bay and the sons and daughters. There is no better thing you can do for your parents than when they die and you remember them every day. Some of you, you hardly go to the graves and visit your loved ones. Even if Jamaat organized, people don't go. So I want to, I'm going to share about three, four hikayat with you. And I want you to listen very carefully. It will help us a lot to understand what sort of provisions our loved ones who are not in this world need from us and require from us. So this old, this alim, he saw, but the old man was very sad. All other souls were happy. Only one old man, and he happened to be the oldest, according to this hikayah. So this alim, in the dream, he asked the old man, why are you not happy? What's the problem? Then the old man responded by saying, all these people that you see, every day and night, gifts come from them, from their loved ones. But ever since I came here, I have not received even one gift from my family members. Hence, indeed, I am in pain. I am not in comfort. And I know I wasn't a good person when I was alive. Then the alim asked him, do you have a son or a daughter? So therefore fathers listen very carefully and sons listen. He said, I have only one son, but he's a very poor son. 
He has nothing. It is a dream. And then the alim asked him, what is the work of your son? He said, my son wash cars. Where can I find your son? He said, you go on this particular area, you will see him, people come with their cars and he wash them and that is how he earns his living and he has a very big family. Then the alim said, all of a sudden I woke up. When I woke up, I decided to go and look for his son. And fortunately, I met the son and found the son. When I met the son, I found him washing someone's car. So I asked him, where is your father? He said, my father died many years ago. Then he asked the son, do you visit your father? Do you do some good charity on behalf of your father? He said, I have big family. I hardly visit my father. And I don't even have money to do some good work for my father. Then the alim told him, do you want to make your father happy? He said, yes, of course, I want to make my father happy. But I've got nothing to make my father happy. I've got big family. I don't even have time. Weekends, I'm working. Because it's hand to mouth. Then the alim said, no, your father need the gift for Almighty God to illuminate his grief. He said, I've got nothing. And the alim repeated. Then he asked the alim, what can I do? Then the alim suggested to him, you know, you have nothing. But this water which you are using to wash the car, you're getting it for free. You can take two buckets of this water and give to people who are in need there on behalf of your father. And Almighty God will illuminate the grave of your father. And the boy went and did the same. Then Alim, being a great scholar, God-fearing, he saw the father in a grave, again in his dream. And now when he saw the father, he saw the father in a good mood, the grave is illuminating. Then he asked him, why today you are in this way? He said, indeed, I've received a gift from my son, and God Almighty has removed me from punishment to the light. So therefore, that is what Marhumi need. Like, you see, all of us sitting here, we all claim to love Ahl al-Bayt. But we will truly know whether we truly love them the day we depart from this world. I share one ikaya with you, which Mirza Qadi, the scholar who taught Allah Matabatabai, narrated from his book. He said, you will only know if you are genuine the day you are buried. Now everybody thinks it's Shia, Shia, Ahl al-Bayt. Good for you. But the day you get there, that is the moment you will know if you are a true lover of Amir al-Mu'minin. Mullah Qadi narrated this, and Allah Matabatwa mentioned this many places in his books. There was a young lady who lost her mom, and she was a very close to her mother. When the mom died, the girl was crying up and down, jumping here and there. To such an extent that when the ladies were making the gusul, they were washing the mom. They did not, she, they did, she didn't want the ladies to wash. She would help her mom and they would stop her, but the girl will keep on crying. When they went to grave cemetery, the girl followed them because of the love she had for her mom. When they put the mom inside, they wanted to cover like the way we cover, and the girl went inside the grave and she laid on the body of her mom. Now, how are we going to do? They could not bury. So they take a piece of cloth and they covered and they left the girl. Now when they left the girl, they went back home. The next morning they came back. They saw that girl, young girl, the whole hair turned into gray color. Completely. And the girl was crying. So they removed her, they brought her up. And the mom, of course, was lying there. So they asked her, why all of a sudden your hair turned into gray? She said, I saw what you have not seen. He said, when you buried my mom and you left, I saw two persons. I have not seen them, but I could see the image. They asked my mom, who is your God? And she mentioned. Who is your prophet? And she mentioned. Then she said, all of a sudden, I saw one person standing in between these two people. 
And then when they ask her, who was your imam? And that person standing in between the two, he said, you don't have mouth because you never follow me sincerely. So they said, no, we don't know the interpretation of this. We need to go to the scholars. So they went to one great scholar, ask him. And he said, you know, the first two, the image were Munkar wa Nakir. And the one standing behind was Imam Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam. Said you don't have mouth to answer. Because you were never sincere about our love. Whenever we had told you, if you are sincere about us, we will intervene on your behalf when your time is up to depart. You never believed in that. So this is the moment when you will need us. But God has not given me permission to intercede on your behalf. That is why you find Prophet Isa alayhi salam. He visited cemetery. And he realized that one person in a cemetery was receiving punishment. And Isa came back after one year. And he found that the person was receiving blessings from Almighty God. Isa raised up his hand, Jesus Christ, and asked God, Oh, Almighty God, why is it that last year he was in punishment and today he's happy? He said when he died, he left a wife who was pregnant. And now the wife has started teaching Bismillah to the child. The child is struggling to say Bismillah. And because of that, Allah has changed punishment to blessing. So therefore, fathers and mothers, there is no better investment than to invest in the spirituality of your children. If you teach your children about God properly and you teach them about Allah and Ahl al-Bayt, when you go out of this world, they will remember you. I know you are scared as you invest in their material because when you become old, at least they can look after you. Yes, you invest in the material because you don't want them to struggle. Good. Do you want to struggle on the day of Qiyamah? Who want to struggle on the day of Kiyama? That's the question. But when we look at our situation, it's like we want to struggle all of us on the day of Kiyama. And nobody is paying much attention to the spirituality of his son or daughters. We don't bother much about bringing the children. Hence, Imam Amir al muminin was asked by, by, by Malik ibn Ashtar. When Imam was telling him about the people of Egypt in that long khutbah, Malik Ashtar asked Amir al-Mu'mineen, what should I tell mothers and fathers? Then Amir al-Mu'mineen said to Malik Ashtar, tell them to spend more time in investing in the spirituality of their sons and daughters as that will help them in dunya and akhirah. It will help us in dunya and it will help us in akhirah. And for example, those of you who don't want to visit your parents, some of us, we have our parents here in Kariako. We hardly visit. We only take advantage when somebody dies. We go rush, we go. There is a very beautiful rikaya that one particular person used to visit his father every week Friday. So one Friday, somebody died. And they went together to bury the father, uh, to that person. And he was rushing to go to work. So he did not pass by his father. He just passed, Salaamu Alaikum, Ya al Kubur, and he left. So that night he saw his father in his dream. And the father said, you have disrespected me. You are disobedient to me. Then the son asked him, Father, what have I done? Then the father said, you came. You did not even have time to say a good salam unto my grave. And know that the hajat of your dunya and akhira is in my hand. To that extent. Then if we, those who don't go, only one year we go, after one, on Eid we go, then what? So number one, you as a son, you as a daughter, constantly you must remember them and go and visit them. Number two,
paying their debt, which one time we mentioned, but now I want to quantify it for our Nikaya. Always make sure you pay what your parents owe when they were alive. There was one person, he was living with his father, and they were very poor, very, very poor family. So one morning, there was a rain, and so the rain affected the roof of their house, so the roof got out. So he and his father were trying to sort out the roof. Then the ring of the father got missing in the process. And the father loved the ring so much. He loved the ring. Now he kept on looking for the ring and he could not find the ring. That affected the father and he died in the process. When he died in the process, the son buried the father. Very good father. But this, the father kept on coming to the son. You know, sometimes it happens to us also. You see your marhum father and mom, sometimes in a good mood, sometimes in a bad mood. When you see in a bad mood, don't take it lightly. They are signaling something to you that you are not doing something right. Stand up and do something. So he kept on seeing the father. Then one moment he made two rakats. And he asked Allah, Allah, I kept on seeing my father, but I really don't know what the father was trying to tell me. And of course, you know, we once discussed how the souls of the Marwumin connect with us in this world. Then the father said, I owe five dirham. Will you pay on my behalf? Because I'm sad here. All my salat, all my deeds did not save me. Because there was no ikhlas in what I was doing. But if you can pay this on my behalf, this shows how merciful Allah is to us. It's not just about your salah. It's not just about what you are doing. If you leave a good son, it's enough, Allah. So now the father and the son ask him, are you really and truly my father? I don't know you. Can you tell me something about myself? Then the father told him, are we not fixing the roof together in the house? Then he said, who did you take his or her money? He showed him. And then the son went and paid that dirham, five dirham. And then the son came, he prayed two rakat again. When he prayed two rakat, he said, Ya Allah, I want you to show me my father again. Allah showed him the father in the middle of Ahlul Bayt, alayhi wa salam. Salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. So therefore, we as sons, we have duties. There was one boy, this is a real story which happened in Iraq, in Najaf, which was narrated by one of our ayatollah. He said, this boy, every night he will do two rakat for his maroon father and mom. Every night. Every night, two rakat for them. Then one moment, a great scholar came in town. Great scholar. Muhammad Sadiq Tahrani. He came in town. So everybody was visiting the scholar and giving khidmat to the scholar. Food to the scholar, hadiyah to the scholar, like the way it happens today, hadiyah to the scholar. So, so now, the son could not make the two rak'at for more than a week. Then, all of a sudden, he's business stopped flourishing. And the son was a very pious son. He kept on asking Allah at night for Allah to help him. Then one night, he saw his father in a dream. Then the father told him, I know you are in trouble. But your trouble is because every night you used to give me two rakat hadiyah. But for the past one week, you did not give me two rakat hadiyah. Hence, you are in this trouble. You know what the son did? He paid back all, and the business flourished more than the way he was expecting. So therefore, parents, we have golden opportunities when Allah bless us with children. There are those who do not have children. And there are those who are not blessed with children. But those of us who are blessed with children, it is an opportunity given to us by Allah. And if you bring them the way God Almighty wants, and they remember us with only one Fatiha, 
it is enough to illuminate our graves. But if we fail to do that, when Quran says, Yawma yu'addu ala yadayi, the day when unjust will chew his finger and his hand. Some of our interpreters, the commentators of Quran says, one manifestation or verification of an unjust is the one who fails to upbring his child according to the teachings of Islam. You are doing injustice to yourself and injustice to that son again. And if you don't want to chew our fingers, then the best route is to look after these sons and to look after these daughters. And in conclusion, this goes to the family of Shaheen Bai and especially her son, our brother here, we sit and I forgot your name, and the rest. She's gone. 40 night now. There are things she needs from you. What's your name? I forgot. Masum. This goes to direct. You are the son. To you, it's like wajib. To us, it's wajib kifai. This is your mom. And to the families. You know when she was here, what she would need, maybe beautiful clothes, good housing. Now it's not about that anymore. It's about the salat you do. It's about the Quran you recite. It's about the hajj you go. It's about the ziyara you do. That's the only thing she requires. Other things is waste. You do for her, automatically your children are going to do for you. You don't do, miracle will not happen. As they said, it's tit for that. It works also in Allah's system. It's cause and effect, casualty. She need constant dua every day in your salah. In sajida, say this one thing. God the Almighty, forgive my beloved mom. Every day. Isn't it somebody during the lifetime of Prophet Muhammad? <laughs> Prophet went to the cemetery and people were making dua on one grave and Rasulullah went to one grave and he stood there and he started crying. They asked the Holy Prophet, why are you crying? This is in Jannatul Baqi. It happened in Baqi. Rasulullah said, because I could sense a person of this grave is receiving punishment. So one companion said, I know this person. We buried him some years ago. Do you know his house? He said, yes. Do you know his family? He said, yes. This goes to all of our sons. Rasulullah went and found the son busy drinking alcohol. Clubbing. The Rasulullah, the Holy Prophet Muhammad called him. He sat with him. He said, if you don't become good for yourself, be good for your mom and father. Today we have these challenges. And sometimes we want to give up. Don't give up. God, Rasulullah, the only prophet of Islam, brought this boy. He counseled him. Said, start praying little by little. And prophet would take him to Jannat al-Baqi, where the mom was buried. And prophet would sit together with him. Say, let's pray. After a month, Rasulullah told the companions, because of the sincerity of this son, whom some of you have given up on him. His mom now is one of the women of Jannah. So prayers. Every day don't forget. That's number one. Number two. If Allah blesses you. Visit Imam al Hussein in the name of your mom. Or the family members. That's what she requires. Visit. This is Yara. On behalf of my mom. And number three. Feed poor people. In the name of your mom. Feed poor people. In the name of your mom. And this came beautifully in the riwaya of our fourth imam. Our fourth imam you all know. He would carry food and go. And sometimes. And he would do it at night. So people would ask him sort of questions. 
You are the son of prophets. You are sinless. Why carrying this food? One of the responses which I found Imam Zain Labdin gave in one time when he was asked, he said, because I want God to illuminate more of the grief of my father about Abdullah. To sign his mass home. He doesn't need that sadaqah. It's to us. It's a lesson to us. So you provide and you feed on behalf of them. Once you do that, you will see Allah will forgive you and Allah will forgive your loved one. So therefore, in conclusion, brothers and sisters, my message of tonight is what? We should not forget our loved ones. Let's bring them to our lives. Let's remember them now and then. They need it more. And lucky are some of you who have their parents buried next to them here. Some of their parents are buried in Europe, in the West. Some are buried in another city, in another country. But for those of us who have our parents here, this is an opportunity to try as much as we can to visit them. And your visit, wallahi, you don't know what it will do to them. Hence, in conclusion, we remember the beloved son of Abba Abdullah Hussein Ali Yunil Akbar. Imam al Hussein alayhi salam loved Ali Yunil Akbar so much. Not because of anything, because Ali Yunil Akbar was a pious son. That is why it was very difficult for Abba Abdullah to see Ali Yunil Akbar going. Because Abba Abdullah knew the type of upbringing he gave Ali Yunil Akbar. And the narration told us. When each and every companion would come for permission, Abba Abdullah would hesitate to grant permission. But the only one who came and he did not hesitate to grant permission, it was Ali Yunil Akbar alayhi salam. Arbab al-Makatil said it was as if when Ali Yunil Akbar was coming, Abba Abdullah was saying in his mind, what should I tell this boy? Should I tell him go or not go? Arbab al-Makatil said as if Abba Abdullah was saying, I love this boy so much. He is the apple of my eye. He is the comfort of my eye. If he goes, what will happen? And if, he don't, if I don't allow him to go, what will happen? Hence, the narration says, when Ali Yunil Akbar came, Abba Abdullah said to Akbar, go and bid farewell to Sayyida Zainab and your mom. It is said when he arrived as narration says, he looked like Rasulullah. And his intellect was like the intellect of Rasulullah. The moment Sayyida Zainab and Layla and Um Kulthum and Rukaya saw Ali Yunil Akbar coming, they all burst in tears. Because they knew that was the end of Ali Yunil Akbar. Now Ali, I want the fathers look at this line. When Ali Yunil Akbar came out and Ali Yunil Akbar rode his horse towards the battlefield. Abba Abdullah kept on walking behind Ali Yunil Akbar. All of a sudden, Akbar stood and he realized that the father was following him. Then Ali, Abba, Ali Akbar asked Abba Abdullah, Father, you've granted permission. Why are you following me like this? He said, Akbar, you will know the day you become a father. That is why it's important to invest on the spirituality of our children. Abba Abdullah said, Wallah, Akbar, you will understand the day you will become a father. Then I said, Abba Abdullah, that was the end of Akbar. He never became father. Abba Yunil Akbar went to the battlefield. You know he defended humanity. He defended Allah. He defended the religion of his grandfather. All of a sudden, the enemy, as they surrounded Ali Yunil Akbar, one of them lifted the dagger and he stabbed on the chest of Ali Yunil Akbar. They said he dug on the chest. Huh? When Ali Yunil Akbar was falling down, he called out, Wa alayka salam, ya Aba Abdullah. Narration said, look at the love of Abba Abdullah to Ali Yunil Akbar. And I know we love our sons like that. Abba Abdullah came out huh? and he rode at the horse because he had the voice of Akbar. Huh? But as we all know, narration says, Abba Abdullah took wrong direction towards the body of Akbar. Then Bibi Sakina called us, Papa, where are you going? The father said, Sakina, I am going to Ali Yunil Akbar. 
Then Sakina said, you've taken wrong direction. Ali is lying there and you are going that direction. What was the response of Abba Abdullah? He said, Wallah, Sakina, it kills me to know Ali Yun al-Akbar is dying. Abba Abdullah reached the body of Ali Yun al-Akbar. He saw Akbar raising one hand, saying, Alayka salam ya Abba Abdullah. And as we know, narration told us, huh? Akbar would always greet the father with two hands and even hug the father. But at this moment, he was lying on the ground and he was raising only one hand. Abba Abdullah got closer. Why Akbar today with only one hand? Hussein realized that Akbar was covering the dada with the left hand. This is where Arbab al Makatil said, Abba Abdullah then stood. And he faced towards the direction of Najaf al Ashraf. And he passed salam, Assalamu alayka ya Amir al Mu'mineen. And he said, Oh my father, you lifted the door of Khaybar with your hand. Come and see your son in Karbala. He's lifting dagger from the chest of his son. Narration says, All of a sudden, in that final moment, Akbar would smile and Akbar would cry. Abba Abdullah got closer to Akbar. Akbar, why are you smiling and at the same time crying? Eh? Hey, Wallah, narration says, Akbar, I am smiling because I see Rasulullah. But Akbar, why are you crying at the same time? Eh? He said, I cry because I see Fatima Zahra. She's slapping on her cheek. Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raja'oon. Wa si'alamu alladhina zalamu wa ayya munkalabin yankalibun. Raise up your hands, brothers and sisters. Let's make dua. We ask Allah wa ta'ala to forgive us our shortcomings. Ya Allah, Marhuma, Shaheen Bai, Nanji, may Allah grant her Jannat al firdaus All her good deeds and good actions that she was doing when she was alive, may her see the benefit of those good deeds and actions in her life of Barzakh, insha'Allah. Her family, especially her sons and her daughters that she left behind, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect them and protect their faith, insha'Allah. May Allah inspire them to remember her in her life of barzakh, insha'Allah. All of us, one way or the other, we have our loved ones that, we have, that they are in the life of barzakh. We ask Allah wa ta'ala to grant them Jannat al firdaus And may Allah inspire us and to remove laziness from us to be able to visit them constantly, insha'Allah. And we ask Allah, we have marhumin who have lost their life in Iraq in Baghdad, in Balad, and other places. Ya Allah, grant their souls Jannat al firdaus And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make it easier for them wherever they are, insha'Allah. Wa akhir da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alihi tawkhireen.